So we're going to move on now, and we're going to check uh, where markets are because the Dow had, as you know, its third ever worst day of trading. Joining us to discuss all of this is Noriel Rubini. He's a professor of economics at NYU Stern. And, and Noriel, I, you know, I have joked with you in the past, the, the, the nickname that some on Wall Street have called you, Dr. Doom, because you do warn people about things that are right in front of our faces. So I'm going to ask you this question. Do you see silver linings? What do you see that might be optimistic looking forward economically as we confront this growing crisis? Well, for now, there is not much to be optimistic. What we can hope is that if, if there's going to be the right fiscal stimulus, that has to be something of at least 3% of GDP, this is going to be a very severe but short recession, meaning the recession is already starting in this quarter, given the data on retail sales that came out today. So we'll have a Q1 contraction, a Q3, Q2 contraction, most likely a Q3 contraction, but if we have uh, the monetary easy we have right now, if we control the pandemics by doing really systematic quarantines, maybe by June, July, the pandemic is stopped. And maybe by the fourth quarter of this year, we have an economic recovery. So this is going to be more severe than the global financial crisis because it's front loaded. It didn't take a year and a half for having the collapse of output. It didn't take us to get to Lehman. Lehman got into one month rather than in 18 months. And it could be shorter, three quarters rather than six, seven, but it's going to be very severe. But the key thing is that we need the fiscal stimulus. You know, the Fed has done everything under the sun. They'll do more, including today the commercial paper facility. But unless you have something to backstop private demand that is collapsing, exports are collapsing, consumption is collapsing, residential investment is collapsing, capex is collapsing, everything is collapsing in the private sector. So you need to have the one agent in the economy that has the balance sheet that can either spend more and or transfer income to those who need it. I've been among the first one to propose $1,000 to every single U.S. resident. doesn't matter whether you're young or old, employed, unemployed, student, uh, formally employed, partially employed, hourly worker, contractor, gig, small business. Everybody needs at least $1,000. Otherwise, we're going to end up like in the Great Depression at this point. Uh, Noriel, it's Julia LaRoche. Thank you so much for joining us. I, I was going to ask you about the Fed's move today and if you thought that might be somewhat helpful, especially given the stress that we have been seeing in the debt markets. What do you make of it? Well, it's useful because large firms that are investment grade, that even the investment grade firms now cannot issue commercial paper, let alone the, those that are not investment grade. That's going to help those highly graded firm. The reality is, however, is that the credit market has completely shut down. There's no issuance of CLOs, of leverage loans, of high yield, of high grade, and we have trillions of dollars of fallen angels, of junk bonds that have been issued with covenant light and other types of junk of that sort. And we're going to have a debt crisis. We've had a spike today in the last month of high yield spreads from 300 to 800. It took one month. In 2015 and 16, it took seven months between August of 15 and February of 16 for having the same kind of spike. That spike has occurred in one month. This is something we didn't even see during the global financial crisis. This is not a problem with the stock market falling 30 percent. Yes, there will be a wealth effect. The problem is in credit market. We're on the verge of a debt crisis. And while there'll be programs to provide uh, credit to those firms and individuals that are illiquid but solvent. The reality is that in the economy, there has been so much issuance of debt in the last few years, corporate debt especially, that many companies are going to go bankrupt regardless of. This is going to be a debt crisis. It's not just a liquidity crisis. So, Noriel, if that's the case, what do you make of this announcement that the Fed just made in terms of starting the restarting the commercial paper facility? If, the, if that is one of the areas of most acute stress, does it make sense for them to do that? And how much is that going to mitigate what's going on? Listen, if you are a triple A or double A or a single A company issuing commercial paper, now you can have access to that facility. But if you are that trillion dollar of fallen angels that are triple B minus, you don't have access to this facility. If you're among those firms that have issued 
something like $8 trillion of junk bonds that is not investment grade, you don't have access to that facility. If you are any one of dozens of millions of small and medium-sized businesses and firms that do not even have access to the bond market, let alone to the corporate paper market, you're not going to be able to have access to this facility. You have essentially the very top of the U.S. corporates, those that actually have cash, those that are triple A, double A, and single A, today cannot issue commercial paper, and we're going to help them. Everybody else, that is 95% of corporate America and businesses, small, medium size, and even larger, do not have access to this facility. So is it helpful? Yes. It's helpful to the Boeings of the world, to the Ford of the world, to those kind of firms. It's not going to be available to anybody else. Mm. Not even, nobody else, meaning 95% of corporate America and of firms of businesses do not have access to this facility and will not have access to this facility. So let's not exaggerate the importance of this small facility that is small in size and limited to very, very few firms that are highly, highly graded. Noriel, I want, I want to go back to the stress that we are seeing in the debt markets. I um, just want to get your take on this because last year and the year before, we were often talking about just record numbers of stock buybacks, of share repurchases. How much do you think that factors into all of this? Well, there has been a massive increase in the last decade of corporate debt. Corporate debt as a share of GDP, as a share of corporate income, as a share of any measure of ability to pay has exploded. It's an all-time high. And part of it was, of course, firms borrowing to invest into capital spending. But we know that in the last few years, there's been a massive increase in share buybacks. Some of those share buybacks have been occurring by using the cash that really profitable firms had, but also less profitable firms, that were those that were junk firms, have issued a huge amount of debt to do share buybacks. This was financial engineering that was boosting artificially earnings per share, that was boosting artificially the value of these firms in the stock market, but was making these firms even more leveraged than they were before. There was a crazy, dangerous, and I would say reckless form of financial engineering. And therefore, those firms that were already highly leveraged that use share buybacks, finance with debt, including many of the activities that are occurring in private equity, are going to be now under severe stress. They were highly leveraged before. They are more leveraged now because of what they did. So, Nouriel, I am curious. I just want to point out, you mentioned the $1,000, uh, and I quoted you, I tweeted your quote out to everybody on Twitter, that the Congress needs to send $1,000 to everybody regardless as soon as possible. Facebook is giving its employees $1,000. They've just announced that. But as Congress is now debating a stimulus package, at the top of this discussion with you, and we should point out you're going to be with us for several more minutes, another 20 minutes, even if we go to break, you mentioned that any stimulus package, fiscal package, needs to be six per, uh, three percent of GDP. So we're talking minimum six hundred billion dollars. Accurate? They're talking possibly a trillion dollars. How quickly can the Congress get that money to stimulate the economy so that we see positive results? Well, first of all, I fear that uh, doing even a two hundred billion dollar fiscal package is going to take us time. They've been discussing the Pelosi bill in the House for over a week now, and that's only 50 billion. And that has not even been passed because the Republican and the Senate are dragging their feet on permanent uh, paid uh, sick leave or things of that sort, right? So we're at 50 billion. And then they're talking now about 800. We're not going to reach 800 until the stock market is down 40 or 50 percent. And then once the market has crashed, once the economy is crashed, we're going to get there. Think about it during the global financial crisis. It was only after Lehman, a year and a half after the crisis started, that we did the bailout of the banks. And it was only after Obama came to power, essentially April of uh, 2009, when we had the joint G20 London conference that led us to a massive coordinated global fiscal stimulus. The reality is that we're in an election year what the Democrats want and what the uh, Republicans want is completely different. We need at least 600 billion, possibly 800 billion, plus liquidity support and other things that the Fed can do. But we're not going to get there, in my view, for another two or three months because we're going to start with 50, then 100, then 200. And once then everything is imploding, once the 
GDP number for the first quarter are going to show us a free fall. Once we're going to have a stock market fall, not 30 percent, but 40 or 50, maybe at that point, the markets are going to force the hands of the politician in Congress and we're going to get the fiscal stimulus. But it's going to be too late. And also our health response is too little too late. Today, in terms of the number of the contagion, we look exactly, exactly like Italy two weeks ago. And we're not doing even the kind of things that Italy is doing. Italy has full quarantine. Everybody, everywhere in the country, 60 million people are locked up at home. We're still in a situation in which anybody can go anywhere. We have to do what Italy has done. We should have done it two weeks ago. Therefore, the contagion in the United States is going to be much worse than in Italy. Mark my word. Two weeks from now, we can discuss it. We're going to be much worse than Italy. So we're not dealing with the health crisis, and we're not dealing with the economic crisis. We're not dealing with the debt crisis, and we're not doing the fiscal stuff. The fiscal stuff should have been passed by Congress two weeks ago. It's going to take us another two months until we get to 3% of GDP. It's not going to happen before, unfortunately. Right. Noriel, I hope that some members of Congress are listening right now. Noriel Rabini um, is going to stay with us. Thank you so much for your initial insights there.